Friday's announcement really relaxes recommendations for social distancing from that three feet to six feet. So I guess, Dr. McBride, I want to start with you. Do you think it should have been six feet to begin with? You know, the science is clear, Elizabeth, that three feet distancing is adequate when you couple that distancing with masking, ventilation, and hand hygiene. So when the science is clear, we need to follow those facts. And I think the CDC has, 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 has finally capitulated and let us know that they are following the science and not letting fear be in the driver's seat of policymaking. Because we know the WHO already had that as a three foot guidance. That's right. And, you know, as, as you know, um, and as, as many people who are watching know, um, the kids need to be in school. The kids need, need school like fish need water. There are enormous social, emotional costs to kids not being in school. Their safety, their well being, um, their, their, their nourishment is at stake. Um, mentally and physically. And so when it's possible to have kids in school, which it can and it can be done, we need to make this a national priority. This needs to be top on our agenda to get kids in school. It's important for their health. It's important for our economy. It's for, important for working parents and when it can be done safely. And when we can prioritize the, the safety of kids and teachers and staff and administrators all together, it needs to be done. And Dr. Zewicki, I wonder when you heard that change of, of policy, how did that? How does that affect your schools and your district? It really doesn't affect us too much because we've been we've been planning for six feet all along, um, as practicable, which is in the New Jersey guidance. Um, so if we, you know, as more kids are coming back, if we're less than six feet, now we're now we don't have to be as stressed about being less than six feet, but we're still shooting for six feet in our cafeterias as much as possible when the students will be unmasked. And we're and now it's a it's a gorgeous day. I'm actually at Chester M. Stevens School where I just welcome back our combined cohorts full day, five days a week. Every kid who wants to be in person can be in person. Um, so I'm on a I'm on a real high from that. But you know, if we're less than six feet. It's okay now. Um, so, so that I think has brought a lot of relief. Speaking for my other colleagues, you know, a lot of folks have been doing, you know, these math equations since last summer, trying to figure out how to get kids in classrooms. And in the heartbreaking, you know, conversations with parents, we don't have room for your kids right now. So those conversations are shifting. So I think it's great news overall. But for us, we're still shooting for as much social distancing as possible. But if we have to be less than six feet in the classroom, we now feel relieved that it's okay for us to do so. Now, Kara, the change only applies to the students, not to the teachers or other adult staff. So how does that really affect you? Obviously, there can be more children in the classroom. Yes, and we're excited to have more children in the classroom. I think um, the fact that the guidance is there, so vaccinations have been a real game changer for staff, right? Because many folks are vulnerable, have underlying um, health conditions. And so the ability to still maintain that distance, if for some reason you cannot get a vaccine or you live with a vulnerable family member, that's great to have that option. So I think it gives folks some wiggle room to make some decisions about what they're comfortable with while we still meet the needs of the students who want to come to school. And Dr. McBride, the CDC differentiated the distance based on age. So for the older kids, the middle and high school students, if they live in an area where COVID is spreading at a high rate, they say the distance of six feet should still be maintained. Do you think that's a smart move? You know, it's interesting. The, the coronavirus doesn't care how old you are, right? The coronavirus, we know, however, affects kids in, in, in less significant ways ways and, and, and kids are less likely to be infected. That's not to say kids can't get infected. It's not to say that the littles aren't getting asymptomatic infections and then spreading it to others. They absolutely can. But the facts are this. Kids are less likely to get sick from COVID-19, less likely to get very sick. You know, 288 kids in the United States have died as of last week from COVID-19. That's 288 more kids than should have died but it's 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 not the same number as as the adults right we've lost you know 500 some adults to COVID-19 um so my point is this that you know kids should try to be as much as they can and, and school should enforce this distance from one another at least three feet no matter what age they are when they are vaccinated they are safer even at six even at three feet or six feet but 
you know, the point is that the, the virus doesn't have a yardstick, right? The virus is going to be transmitted less when people are layering on the very well-established evidence-based risk mitigation elements from distancing, hand-washing, masking, and then vaccination. 